And now, this is a book by P.D. Eastman. It's for the birds, which is called The Best Nest. So listen up. Mr. Bird was happy. He was so happy he had to sing. This was Mr. Bird's song. I love my house, I love my nest, and all the world my nest is best. Then Mrs. Bird came out of the house. It's not the best nest, she said. I'm tired of this old place, said Mrs. Bird. I hate it. Let's look for a new place right now. So they left the old place to look for a new one. This place looks nice, said Mr. Bird. Let's move in here. But somebody else had already moved in. So they looked at another house. This one looks nice, said Mr. Bird. And there's nobody in it. You're on, said Mrs. Bird. This house belongs to a foot. So they went on looking. I like this one, said Mr. Bird. It has a pretty red flag on the roof. I always wanted a house with a flag, said Mrs. Bird. Maybe this place would be all right. But it was not all right. I guess I made a mistake, said Mr. Bird. You made too many mistakes, said Mrs. Bird. I'm going to pick the next house, and here it is, right here. They flew in, they looked around. Isn't it too big, asked Mr. Bird. I like this big place, said Mrs. Bird. This is the best place to build our new nest. They went right to work. They needed many things to build their nest. First, they got some hay. They got some sort of straws and broom straws. They got some sweater string. They got some stocking string and mattress stuffing. They got some horse hair. They got some man hair. So they have all the hay, all the straw, all the string, all the stuffing, all the horse hair, and all the man hair they could carry. They took it all back to build their nest. Mr. and Mrs. Bird worked very hard. It took them the rest of the morning to finish their nest. This nest is really the best, said Mrs. Bird. I want to stay here forever. Mr. Bird was very happy too. He flew to the top of his house. He sang a song again. I love our house, I love our nest. In all the world our nest is best. He was so busy singing, he didn't even see Mr. Parker coming. Every day at 12 o'clock, Mr. Parker came to the church. Mr. Parker came to pull a rope. The rope went up to the bird's new nest. The rope rang the big bell right under Mrs. Bird's nest. Bum, bum, bum. Mr. Mrs. Bird got out of there as fast as she could fly. Bum, 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 bum. When Mr. Bird came in, all he could see was a mess of hay and string and stuff and horse hair and man hair and straws. Where was Mrs. Bird? I'll look for her until I find her, said Mr. Bird. He looked high, he looked low, he looked everywhere from Mrs. Bird. He looked down into a chimney, but Mrs. Bird wasn't there. He looked down into a water barrel, but Mrs. Bird wasn't there. Then he saw a big fat cat. There was a big fat smile on the fat cat's face. There was a pretty brown feathers near the fat cat's mouth. Mr. Bird began to cry. Oh dear, he cried. This big fat cat has eaten Mrs. Bird. Mr. Bird flew off. I'll never see Mrs. Bird again, he cried. It was getting dark. It began to rain. It rained hotter and hotter. Mr. Bird could not see where he was going. Crash! Mr. Bird bumped into something. It was his old house. That old, old house that Mrs. Bird hated. I'll go inside, said Mr. Bird. I'll rest here until the rain stops. 
Mr. Bird went in, and there was Mrs. Bird sitting there singing. I love my house, I love my nest, and all the world in this nest is best. You here? gasped Mr. Bird. I thought you hated his own nest. Mrs. Bird smiled. I used to hate it, she said, but a mother bird can change her mind. You see, there's no nest like an old nest for a brand new bird. And when the egg popped open, the new bird popped so too. The end. I hope you like this book because no matter where your, net, where your home is, you can change your mind but if you like it or not. It's for the birds, so give me a tweet, tweet, or subscribe to this channel. But don't forget to go on Twitter. <laughs>